Hey rugby our viewers and welcome back to another exciting episode. It is a week of uh, World Cup rugby that we've been waiting for at Start of France. Uh, South Africa will be taking on Ireland in a very anticipated clash. Gabsy, good to see you. How are you? Hey Gwede, lovely to have you back in, uh, how can I say, the normal studio. Hope you have yeah. rested well and enjoy that last trip and that last game um, in Bordeaux. I'm sure it was a lot of fun there in the wine region. But I'll hear all about that after the pod because we're here today for a massive game. I mean, it's the world number one against the world number two, world champions against world number one. Um, it it mm. shouldn't be a pool stage game, to be honest. It shouldn't be a pool stage game. We've spoken about this many times, how this draw actually has ended up um, with the current situation where we see the top sides, you know, fighting it out in the pools and, and uh, you know, two of those top, top four sides not being able to progress um, past the quarters. So, um, yeah, but a highly um, anticipated clash coming up this weekend. Ireland looking very good. They faced uh, Romania in the first round and then against Tonga, um, winning both of those games rather convincingly. Yeah. And South Africa having faced Scotland and then Romania and also having won them r relatively convincingly. So, but going to be yeah, an exciting I mean, one this weekend. The, the, the big question is, Gwede, yeah, I just want to, to stop you there. I mean, both of these teams have obviously um, got off with two Ws, but... You know, the real question is, I mean, we've played Scotland. I would say it was, yeah, a convincing win. Um, but Ireland, I mean, have they really been challenged? I mean, that's the big question. You know, this is probably going to be for them now the start of knockout rugby because after this, it's going to also be still Scotland and then pool stages. And we know history tells us they haven't gone past the quarterfinals. So, um yeah, I mean, that's history. That's all history. That's and, history. And the Irish fans will definitely know that. But yes, Gab uh, Gabriel, you're absolutely right. They're facing now uh, the defending champions, uh, South Africa, after which they will have to face Scotland. Then they move into the quarterfinals, um, which we would imagine they would. And uh, probably based on the result of this uh, weekend, they'll either play, play uh, France or they'll play New Zealand. It doesn't get any easier. Uh, and then progressing to the semifinals and then finals. So, I mean, there's a definite opportunity that we will see uh, these two teams face again uh, in the final. Um, so we would imagine that maybe they don't give out all their tactics just yet and maybe just withheld a few things for just in case we see each other again. Um, so, yeah, let's see how it goes. We don't know yet, Gabsy. We don't know what the, the Irish uh, lineup will look like uh, yeah. the Springboks as usual have released their lineup uh, quite ahead of uh, schedule towards the rest of the countries which we always love um, but let's get straight into it Gabsy let's first the, the, the first topic that I want to bring up with regards to Ireland they've been looking you know phenomenal as we expect them to do right they've got a phenomenal attack People don't talk enough about their defense. Um, they've got great uh, strength and depth in their squad. One little concern that I would have uh, from from their point of view is, is is maybe that game against Tonga where they conceded 14 turnovers. Now, if you're a Springbok coaching group, you would look at that and you would think, okay, let's uh, let's put let's let's put some pressure on that breakdown. Let's put uh, seven one bench with uh, three fetches on the bench. To, uh, to really make it ugly. Um, do you think that is why, um, you know, the, the Springbok, uh, you know, coaching squad have gone for that kind of selection? Yeah, I mean, Gwede, I think obviously you point out an excellent point there. I mean, for me, it's, it's quite tough to say because obviously the injury of Malcolm Marks, you know, kind of almost forces us in this direction. Um, yes, the 7-1 is, um, for me, maybe a little bit of a surprise because I generally thought it was a once-off experiment. Um, but it does make sense, you know, after you've you've pointed it out to me again earlier, the 14 turnovers. And obviously, it worked against the All Blacks, who's a phenomenal team. And I think, you know, if we want to go and really, you know, let's say manhandle the Irish, we need to do it up front. Um, you know, they have an extremely strong back line. And... Should you give Johnny Sexton enough front football and he gets to use his boot yeah. and he gets to, you know, manage the game? Um, 
it could get quite nasty. And I, I would really hope that we, we could suffocate them up front because if we don't do that and, and they start playing with their back line and they start kicking up and unders yeah. and, you know, cross kicks and start playing the ball from side mm-hmm. to side, it could, could it, it get could ugly get, for it, the box. It, it could get ugly. And I mean, I would really hope um, that we do suffocate them up front because we do have, you know, uh, the manpower for it. I mean, we've gone with a 7-1 split. You've got, you know, six forwards on the bench, uh, so seven forwards on the bench. That's all for me, like, um, you know, brutal. If I look at that lineup, I mean... Basically replacing, you know, the entire... But okay, the, the Gantry, entire, we'll, get, yeah. <laughs> we'll get to the, the lineup in a second. Let's quickly uh, further talk about Ireland. They love thriving off quick rock ball, right? Uh, the quicker that ball gets out, Jameson Gibson Park, he rips it out of there. And w- once they get into that flow of their attack with their little loop passes and stuff, it can make it very, very difficult for defences. Now... We know that the Springbok rush defense uh, really is a thorn in the side of uh, of teams, um, especially with regards to getting their attack going. And, you know, it's no different to Ireland. However, Ireland do have the means of getting around that rush defense, and they'll be very much aware of that. Now, will we see the amount of pressure um, that our forwards will be putting on Johnny Sexton as we did uh, in that Scotland game on with uh, Finn Russell, because I mean Finn Russell couldn't really get that backline going, well, um, yeah, or I their mean, attacking structure going because he was on the floor half the time. I would say one hundred percent that's what we're going for. Um, I also think, like you made an excellent point a bit earlier, do we maybe hold back one or two tactics possibly? Um, I do think we are going to still use this game almost a little bit as an experiment to see how well does the 7-1 go. Maybe before you know it, we see yeah. an 8-0 um, and we just, you know, <laughs> substitute the whole pack of forwards. Um, you have yeah. the likes of, you know, Kwaha and Peter Stefft at the way that can definitely partner up and center. So, um, yeah, no, I mean, all jokes aside, I would say that's that's what we're going for. If it fails and if Johnny Sexton managed to find a way through our back line, get the wall wide, whether it's through a cross kick, a up and under, a grubber or just a loop around, whatever they do, if they get around this, you know, rapid defense of ours um, or if you can call it parachute defense, whatever you want to call it, if there's a way for them around that, it could get, you know, tricky um, and we'll have to find a way to, to mm. kind of defend that. And we only have one uh, player on the bench and the likes of Kobus Reinach. But, I mean, yeah, mm-hmm. if, if they get front football, um, it, it's going to be a, a long day at the office for the box. Um, I do think, yeah. however, that, you know, Dwayne Vermeulen is also sitting this one out. Maybe he's sitting this one out to maybe help Jock and Rassi with the lights because maybe he can coordinate a bit of the Irish tactics <laughs> there, you know. He's played a bit of rugby yeah. up there at Ulster. So, um yeah. yeah, it's going to be an interesting game. Going for me, I really don't know what to make. It's it's two you know heavyweights going up against each other. At the end of the day, it's World yeah. Cup rugby. It's a pool stage game, but I think both of them would like to go out and you know win this game. Um, it's a it's a massive and game. And Gabs, you know the other thing is is that Ireland now they have uh, Sheehan coming back in, Doris coming back in, so they're looking fully fit as well. Now, okay, they haven't yet you know played a, a big opposition this World Cup yet, but they 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 have all their um, sort of experience and their 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 strongest team basically available for selection. Um, yeah. So that's something else. And you've got Bundy Aki being in in crazy phenomenal form. Um, so uh, so let's see. But Gabsy, let's move into the the Springbok lineup, right? Uh, yeah. We've seen it; they released it um, out uh, yesterday, um, and uh, look, it looks rather similar to how we selected our team playing against them in 2022 last year uh, in Dublin. We got the likes of Jasper Visa, you got Jason Colby, Damien Willemse would is going to run the ball from from back. So don't expect the box to kick um, directly back uh, to Ireland after receiving. They're probably going to set up a few phases and hopefully keep the pressure on Ireland and not give them all that much possession. Yeah. No, I mean, also, one thing I just want to point out that's quite exciting is you see a combination there on the bench in the likes of John Klan and Arges Neyman playing their rugby, mm. uh, you know, four months. To, they're going to come off the bench. They're going to have a huge impact on that game. They're probably going to cause some damage at the, the lineouts as well. So I'm excited to see them come off the bench. 
Um, but yeah, like you've said it before, there's quite a lot of faces that played against them last year in, in, in Dublin. And I mean, it's the first time this time around that I think you pointed out to me that they're playing on, on you know, neutral terms or on neutral yeah. soil, if we can say it like that. So They've never I mean, played in a World Cup against each other. How odd. Exactly. So, I mean, there's no home, home ground advantage here. Um, last year was a super close game. Um, it was a really close game. What was it? One point or two points, if I'm not mistaking. I and think it was um, two three point difference. Yeah. yeah. So it was a really close game. Um, the only thing here for me is, you know, obviously, I think you know Malcolm Marks is a massive loss for the box. Probably for me, one of the most important players in that setup. Um, just with the yeah. fact, knowing the fact that you know we like to kick for touch, we like to drive with the ball. He's a fetcher. He can do everything. So now you have the likes of Bongi Manambi, obviously phenomenal mm-hmm. player as well. But off the bench, you have Dion Ferri, who's not actually, you know, nowadays known for being a hooker. So um, mm. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see how he's going to go against not Romania, but against the world number one on hooker. So yeah. it's going to yeah. be interesting. This is the real test. How, this is the real test. It's going to be interesting to see how Dion Ferri copes at hooker and if they throw in Marco van Staren there potentially for 15 minutes or so towards the end of yeah. the game to see if it really is, um, if, if it's really going to work like this, not having any other special hookers in the team. If, but, the um, thing is also, sorry, I just want to interject there, you know, um, to replace Bongi Mbenambe, you get a guy like Joseph Dueba. It's a more like-for-like replacement. Now, to replace someone like Malcolm Marks, you can't just bring in a, jo- a Joseph Dueba. Now, what you can do is you can combine the skills of Dion Ferri and Marco van Staden, and kind of fetch a hookerish <laughs> kind of mold um, to then create, you know, sort of a backup for Malcolm Marks. And and that is exactly what they've gone and, and done. So if, if I would really works, like to know where that philosophy came from maybe some brandies on tour because it's an excellent way to to point it out you've not, never told me the secret but it's a very good point you make there i mean well, uh, we don't know <laughs> if that is but okay pollard is now come in for malcolm marks he's not featuring in this game fair enough uh, they said the the coaching staff said so in the beginning um but okay i mean we're we're playing with seven forwards with one will it backfire we don't know let, guys you should let us know in the comments what you guys think about this selection the back line looks like it picks itself at this stage. Um, I would have liked to maybe see Cannon Moody on a wing instead of a center, but it looks like he has now become that backup uh, um, outside center. And then no Dwayne for Mielen, which is uh, a quite interesting, um, seeing that he is, is also a, yeah. a great guy to have on there in terms of a defensive captain and a ball stealing capability. Yeah, I think you will be doing a bit off the field coaching. But yeah, I mean, guys, please let us know what you make of this 7-1 split. What do you make of Andre Pollard being pulled up? Let us what know do you what make you of Ireland? Of, <laughs> what do you make of Ireland? And let us know what you make scary of this one selection. This. Yeah, um, let it's us know your game. predictions. And also check out the, the rugby up. We're going to have a nice giveaway coming up in the, in the next week. So exciting one. Yeah. Give us your predictions. Thank you for continuously tuning in. And um, yeah, very excited to slowly hey, but surely head into the, the knockouts. Brew, guys. It's, yeah. it's been a tight affair. Good luck. And remember, there's a game going on right now already as well. <laughs> yeah. All right. Background. That's probably should get this over with. All right, guys. Cheers, guys. <laughs> Thank Have you, Goody. Cheers. Take care, guys. <laughs>